how are you guys doing tonight so not too often will we drop two videos in one day however it's not too often i'm at home already working on stuff and we see stuff like this drop where i can holy cow i can drop what i'm doing and actually cover a top eight breakdown when it happens instead of being like the seventh or eighth person to do it and everyone just sees the same video repeatedly I do want to give a quick shout out and not that you need it link down below to the forbidden mountain i did see dan's post and that's where i realized that the top eight was up um, i remember checking into the tournament it was going to be seven rounds of swiss day one two rounds day two with top 32 300 player cap uh, pending the actual turnout which i don't have the that information or what the total top eight playout will be um, the obviously less players less rounds smaller top cut we do have the top eight decks though after swiss to go over and to little surprise they are all in the big four the tier ones the decks uh nothing outside of tier one made top eight after swiss uh we have three bucky discards two ruby amethyst controls two sisu on ice and one sapphire steel wheel let's go ahead and jump on into those decks though and see if there's anything special I'm a little smaller here today because I don't want to cover up any of the cards. So made sure to do that. Lots of good information down below as far as Patreon giveaways. We have a case giveaway going on when we hit 4,000 subscribers. And that's enough for my self-promotion. So James Gray, congratulations to all these players, by the way, making top eight. Piloted the Sapphire Steel deck to an eighth place after Swiss finish. Uh, looking over the list, there's not really anything that jumps out too, too much. Uh, he's playing two Maurice's Workshop, which is the card right next to Lucky Dime. And when you play, um, it's essentially a draw engine. When you play other items, it allows you to be able to draw cards. So it's there as a draw engine in addition to the Hiram. Uh, we're playing two Magic Brooms who can help deal with Diablo. Smee, Mickey, Hiram, Cogsworth, them are all pretty much staples at four of. Mickey, I guess you can make a case for two or three some of the time. But he's typically in these decks to some degree. Item removal of choice, they went with Beast Hardheaded as a 2 of the 445 coster who quests for 2 over something like Aladdin for the recurring destruction or the Benja is the cheaper on play option because the 2 strength in this format just kind of loses to a lot of other cards whereas the 4 strength does not. And when you do your normal curve line and you're ramping, hitting that 5 ink by turn 4 and playing him is just kind of right on par for the course so Beast makes a lot of sense. No bells, but we are playing Ariel as one of our five questers because if you have more items, she quests for five. That's pretty good. And the ward is also pretty nice. Tinkerbell is just insane in this format. If you're playing Steel, I think you should be playing for Tinkerbell. Uh, we see the seven cost Simba in here. For those unfamiliar with Simba, on play or when he destroys a character by challenging, he can deal two damage to a character or draw two cards, discard two cards. So he's another on play damage card or just recursive, I kill this character, now I'm gonna deal two damage to that character. And he makes a lot of sense because it helps you deal with evasives that otherwise you might not be able to deal with. Tamatoa, the game closer, uh, four of there. Four Babooms, it makes sense and the deck can get away with doing it. It feels like a lot, but at the same time, like with Bucky discard being so good, I understand it. Not saying I would play four, but I absolutely understand it. We also see uh, two Along Came Zeus's. Locations are a little more popular, so I get it. Uh, the card seemingly fell out of favor for a bit. Locations kind of crept back in. And now things like Zeus are coming back into the format uh, to more of a degree. Uh, two Let It Goes, just a really good card. It's removal, it's inkable. Four Grab Your Swords. That one's a little, the ratio is different. Uh, typically, these decks play three. Uh, spreadsheet with a bunch of information and deck cores all linked down below as well. I'll be adding these eight to those deck cores, by the way, uh, as soon as I have time. So four Grab Your Swords. This card is just so good into the Bucky matchup. And when this is one of those decks that can actually get away with hard casting it if they need to because just ramping, they just get ahead so far in value. Then they just blow up your board. Or if they even have the turn because your board's not quite developed enough and you're not like threatening a shift, well, then maybe they just go ahead and play their five cost character. And then next turn, they're going to sing this card instead. They have the eight one drop items to draw cards. That's just insane. Uh, Fishbone Quill is crazy. We mentioned the Maurice's Workshop as a draw engine. 
and then the two lucky dimes for closing out those games as well. Overall, not too, too spicy of a list, but the Maurice's Workshop is pretty neat to see. Uh, Simba saw play towards the end of last format. Absolutely makes sense why it's coming back into this format. Four Grab Your Swords is bold, but again, I get it. The format calls for it. Um, and the two drop spot being for the Magic Broom to help deal with those Diablos. So then let's go ahead and jump into the, oh, wrong one, wrong one, the seventh placed list. Brian Hevlo and he piloted, you guessed it, Bucky Discard. We're going to go on a run of Bucky Discard here in a little bit. So we see Diablos, Robin Hood, Bucky, uh, Ursula. So first thing I notice is no Pegasus. Um, of the three one drops, Pegasus has been the least played. Uh, Diablo allowing that turn two shift Diablo right after you play Bucky by discarding a song. Just getting that free discard and exerting him on turn two to really just get that full value. They typically won't have an answer unless they open like Baboom or if they're playing a Fire the Cannon. So it just guarantees you, I shouldn't say guarantees you, it increases your chance of getting at least that one draw. Um, you go a little neg early, but if they don't answer it with one or two turns, like you just get so far ahead on advantage. Uh, four of each Ursula's. I was starting to see the three drop Ursula played a little less. I was curious if it would come back or stay. Uh, they opted to keep her at four, which just makes sense because double singing Storm Rage on or Strength of the Raging Fire feels so strong. Four Aladdins in here as opposed to the normal three, and they're playing the Flynn Riders and the Dreadnoughts in that four drop spot. So kind of going a little low on the early cost, just the Ursulas and Buckies on two, just the two one drops, uh, just the three uh, three drops, which all of them are very impactful. And then they just start getting into those bigger characters to help play that top deck battle, that higher end game, um, which is a strategy that I've been testing myself. Different different build, but same ideal, ideal, uh, ideology. I can't even talk, apparently. Um, four B's, Robin Hood, Tinkerbells, those are going to be standard in all these lists most likely. Uh, three Storm Rage on and four Strength of the Raging Fire. Usually it's either the other way around or four of each. Uh, probably cut the one Storm because it's uninkable and the Diablo draws anyway if it's exerted. Uh, three Bruno, two Swords, two Coves. Coves just a really nice way for this deck to have those two willpower, uh, two strength characters go up to three, and now your opponent's answers for them, like Brawl, like Storm Rage On, just aren't quite as good because they get that ac extra attack or defense. Overall, uh, not too crazy of a list. Like I said, uh, Flynn Rider's not played super commonly, but he's not unheard of in here. It's, he's a Floodborne, he's a four-coster. You can quest for four, potentially, like, really good card. And then Aladdin being a four of. Other than that, like the des deck's pretty straightforward. I mean, at this point, the deck's pretty optimal. It's pretty optimized, and he made seventh place after Swiss. So, you know, it kind of kind of goes to prove how optimized the deck is. I'm curious to see these next two lists, how similar they are. So John Rowe got sixth place. And once again, we see the Diablo Robin Hood as the two drops. And then just the Bucky and Ursula, uh, or sorry, one drops, just the Bucky and Ursula on two. And then threes, again, same here, except we're playing the three Aladdin, so a little more standardized. The last list wasn't playing Sudden Chill. That's something that started to gain a little bit more popularity. However, here we do see Sudden Chill in there as a three of, so we're playing 11 cards that Ursula can sing. And that's part of with Ursula getting played a little less is Sudden Chill getting cut too because this is a really bad top deck late game. Neither card is really good in the top deck battle. So that's part of why they started to see a little bit less play. Uh, Ursula sticking around though because like I said, Strength of the Raging Fire, Let the Storm Rage On. It's just so good to double sing those types of cards. This list, otherwise, we are playing the five drop Pegasus. Um, okay, no no shift Pegasus, so you're not getting that free evasive for everyone else. But again, I it, I get it. Like you're playing more of the back end game. It makes sense. It's evasive. It quests for two. It's a really good card. Um, one Tinkerbell. I I I get it. I'd I'd for sure play Tinkerbell. I mean, personally, I'd play her a little bit higher. Uh, but Tinkerbell is a very solid card. Baboom in there to help deal with the mirror matches. Pretty good card overall. Rise of the Titans. So this is a card that hasn't seen play in a while. But um, locations are seeing a bit more play again. 
Uh, we kind of mentioned that with Zeus and everything. Um, but so locations are seeing more play, and if they're not on locations, you just ink it. So it's uh, free ink, essentially. You're always going to need ink every single game. You're always going to need ink, so it's never bad to have a card like that that can serve this purpose. Um, we saw Avalanche being played for a while in some of these decks as uh, potential damage. Deals with Aggro, deals with Bucky on turn 4, or can also be used to wipe out locations in, instead. But it's uninkable, so Rise of the Titans I'm not surprised to see starting to come into the format with locations again being more popular. Sudden Chill, one of those cards that just players are so divided on if you should play this or not. Personally, I'm in the no category. But at the end of the day, it's still a good card. You can still play it very effectively. And just like John did, you know, you can still make it very far in a major tournament playing it. 4-4 uh, four, four on the songs, nothing crazy there. F two Zeus. Um, no swords. I don't... The no swords, one Tinkerbell. I get it because you're playing Baboom as well to deal with the mirror match. But personally, I just really like those cards a little bit more but at the end of the day we can all play different that's kind of the beauty of the game four coves here so again not not too crazy of a list just some different ratios the rise of the titan being really the own, only spicy card so far played um let's see we got one more um i'm not going to butcher the name i'm horrible at pronunciation so we're just going to go ahead and do that uh here we're really low on our one costs um, obviously, all these lists, Hidden Cove is a one cost, by the way. That's a big part of why Pegasus has been been getting cut in that one drop spot because you don't want to play Diablo, Robin Hood, and Pegasus and Hidden Cove. It's just a lot of one drop cards to be playing. Uh, just two Diablo here. Uh, potentially see their hand, like I said, potentially shift. They're prioritizing Hidden Cove and Robin Hood, which makes sense. I get it. Um, then we only play two two drop Ursulas. That's. That one's a bit interesting. I think the card is just insane. Um, mirror match, it's good. And even red blue, it's a solid card. Like hitting uh, one jump or how far I'll or, or yeah, how far I'll go is really good to just slow that ramp down. Uh, versus blue decks. Um, otherwise, you know, four, four, three, four, pretty good. Cricky in there is spicy too. I do like Cricky a lot. And just boosting all your characters so you can just deal with your opponent's board really well. Uh, quest for three. So I, I, I really, really like Kirky as a card. You don't see him too much in the steel list. He's more of a Amethyst Emerald card. But I do really, really like Kirky in there. Uh, so it's nice to see that. Three Pegasus, the four Beasts, four Hoods. Again, those are going to be standard across the board. Two Tinkerbells. Well, two's twice as good as one, half as good as four, right? So... Personally, I would play a minimum of two Tinkerbell if it was me. I would also probably play three or four, but no less than two this format if I'm on steel. Tinkerbell is just too good right now. Uh, two Avalanches, okay. So we did talk about Avalanche a little bit, and again, it deals one damage across the board and can wipe out a location. Uh, a couple weeks ago at Locals, had seen a player do this into the tempo matchup. He was on Sapphire Steel, though. Played Avalanche, got rid of, like, two Merfolks and a Queen's Castle. It was just insane and swung the tide of that game. Uh, so on Sudden Chill again. And once again, the ratio is just different. So we've seen 0, 2, and 3. So Sudden Chill is one of those cards that you can absolutely play around with and see how you want to do it. 3, Storm Rage on. So actually, 2 out of 3 played that. Um, 2, Strength of the Raging Fire. So... We're only playing seven cards for Ursula. Um, I guess. Like, I'm conflicted on this because as a Amethyst Emerald player last format, I would play three Mother Knows Best and four friends on the other side. Um, once in a while, I'd throw a bosses on a roll in there. So I'd play seven to eight targets for her. And I really liked it, and it worked really well. I went as low as six before, and it works in that deck because drawing four is just so incredibly strong. In this deck, though, I don't, I don't know if I like Ursula with a, that low of a count because Storm Rage on is an incredible card to double sing with her. Strength of the Raging Fires, not a bad card by all means, but it requires a little bit more build up for it. And Sudden Chills only good early on, so there's a lot of what ifs kind of going around there. Um, it's working for him, so congratulations to that. I'm just being very nitpicky as a player to give my thoughts on these things. So that's 
kind of my thoughts. I'm not huge on Ursula with just seven songs in this deck, personally. Uh, two Zeus's, pretty standard. Find them flat them. Between that and Avalanche, it's just some nice answers. Avalanche, really good into the mirrors, into the aggro matchups. Find them flat and them really good into those um, Sapphire matchups, item matchups, the Sapphire Steel, which is really good against this deck, by the way, and also the um, Sapphire Ruby deck. So find them flat and them, I, I really like that card as well. Three Bruno, one under the sea. That's, that's spicy too for aggro or just... Not even necessarily aggro, because it deals with, like, Hiram Flavershem, too. It deals with Rapunzel. It actually deals with a lot of cards low-key, and it's pretty nice to have in there. Not too commonly played, so this list is it's a little spicier than the last two. Uh, we had the Cricky in there. We have Avalanche in there. We have the Find'em Flatnum in there. We have the um, Under the Sea in there. And I guess naturally when you play these cards that other people aren't playing, that's why we see two strength three storm rage on things like that it's pretty neat to see a deck i know everyone is so t sick and tired of bucky they don't want to play bucky they don't want to see bucky but all three of these lists were actually a little bit different and intricately it's it's going to affect things like i think in the mirror match i think this one has the math uh the advantage personally versus the other two because like under the sea into the mirror is also a very very strong card um i do think like I said, what, what were the other two? This one's the only one playing Grab Your Sword. So Brian maybe has an advantage there with Swords. Um, I still think the fifth place list probably has the best chance in the mirror match. But that's assuming that they get two mirror matches. So I do like these the different plays a lot. Like Cricky also just late game dealing with threats is very strong. Questing for three, very, very good. Uh, let's go ahead and be done with Bucky decks now. We just did three in a row. We know there's three in here. We have four more decks to do. The top half. And fourth place, Kendall. So the first Ruby Amethyst deck. We're about to hit a bunch of Ruby because, oh, we already showed you the pie chart, so we know what's coming. Uh, also, the first place list after Swiss Lucko has a vi uh, video up on YouTube as well with their channel. I'll throw that video in the link below as long as I remember uh, in case anyone wants to go see him run through his deck quickly with explanations on why he played what he played. Um, so Kendall here, we are playing four Chernabog, three Brooms. I like the draw cards. Not not too crazy, not too much to say about it. They, both these cards, just you're drawing cards early on. That's that's the plan. Uh, four Snakes, four Flins. Then we go into our three drops. We're on four Fox, three the Maleficence, four uh, Sisus, Goat, Rabbit, you know, Maui, really just a straightforward list because if it's not broke, why fix it? Like, I don't think there's anything spicy here. So I don't have a whole lot to say about the list. I like the list a lot. It's very, very, very similar to my list because, again, it's a deck that's just, it does what it does and it does it so well. The first place list I'll have a few more comments on because he went out of the box a little bit and going out of the box a little bit made his deck a little different. It made it a little harder for opponents to project his plays, and he went undefeated through Swiss, so it worked. Uh, but essentially, your one drops, you're playing those cards because you want to draw on turn one, well, turn two, because Chernabog has to quest, and Broom needs to play another character. Personally, I like four Brooms over Chernabog, uh, just because late game you can play it, play another character, draw a card immediately. You don't have to wait that turn to quest with it, you can, but you do not have to. Um, snakes, just really standard. Flynn Rider's kind of a win condition in the deck. Uh, Maleficent there for draw. Your Sisu's there, not only questing for two and dealing a whole bunch of damage to your opponent because her strength gets boosted, she helps out with that Flynn Rider very well. Um, yeah, there's, there's not a whole lot to say. The deck is just really, really good, and... Uh, four Queen's Castle. If you're playing this deck, you absolutely should be on Four Queen's Castle. Uh, be King Undisputed as a three of. It's more common as a two of, but the way the format's going, I understand it. Uh, slowing down a little bit, so playing a little bit more controlly and less up front. Uh, so overall, I like the deck a lot. Like, it's, it's very strong. The deck is very strong. It's very consistent. It's very good at what it does. I don't have anything bad to say about it. 
Number three, Enrique. So we have our first Sisu deck. We're playing two Sisu, the Inkable three drop. Uh, kind of just talked about her a little bit in the last deck. Uh, you see the Gramatala's in there to just get a card to your hand. Your Hiram for your draws. Maui, Malef or Maleficent, Madame Medusa. Four big Sisus. So big Sisus ratio is something that has kind of been around a little bit like three is the most common and uh, some people play two some people play four typically you see sisu as a three of um playing her at four though can throw your opponent off because it's like oh it's grindy we're late game they had to discard them already they already went through their three sisus i'm clear i can go wide and then you drop a four sisu on them and they're like oh you play four because again, three is much more common, or has been at least up to this point of the format. Uh, like the Steel build, Tamatoa is a huge game closer. And then you also have the Maleficent. So essentially this deck just really wants to ramp early on and ramp quickly. You don't get a lot of character presence, so that's why fast decks are so good against this. But we're in a very slow format, so that's why this deck is just so good right now. Uh, you get to play all these just late game power cards. Maui, Medusa, Sisu, Maleficent. They're on your screen. I, like, I don't know what to tell you. These cards are just so good, and this deck is so good at abusing them. Four, develop your brain, because looking at two cards, adding one is strong. Brawl is insane this format. Every Ruby deck should be playing four of it. We have four one jumps and four how far all goes. Again, you're trying to ramp early. You're trying to ramp often. Uh, to be prepared so be prepared is still usually played in these decks i know sisu kind of replaces it because you don't lose your board then but be prepared usually is still played at one or two because you want that board wipe or you want that extra potential to deal with your opponent three ice block uh four popsicle pretty standard there no quill no quill is a big one so i get it um i didn't think in this deck though it was a huge I, I mean, I, I guess I get it because this deck doesn't necessarily, outside of like Hiram, have draw power. You get adding by, um, like, develop replaces itself, Popsicle replaces itself, Grandma Tala gets you a card to your hand. So there's there's that, but outside of Hiram, there's not truly draw power. So I get why you don't want to dump your hand with Quill. Um, yeah, that's... I mean, Stone Dragon, I, I love it in Blurple. In Blurple, I like this card more than Quill, so I get it. But in Blurple, I have a lot more draw power, too, so I can, I guess, and I'm more character-focused. The draw power is actually an argument to play Quill, not not the Dragon, but I'm more character-focused as opposed to item-focused as well in that deck. So I do, I do like dragon, especially in discard format, because you can discard characters, and then your dragon just gets free advantage. Instead of using cards in your hand, you're using cards that are already expired. So I get it. It's just weird to, to see Quill not, not played at all. And I mean, if I'm your opponent and you're not playing Quill, it's like, okay, it kind of changes my plan. And then, oh, he does not play Quill. Like, it just makes you think, because typically when you see this deck, it's like, okay, they're going to go like one, developer popsicle, then two, probably just hard cast one jump, three, go like a quill um, or sisu. Like, they don't really see the dragon coming, and they don't really see the C uh, quill not being played at all. I like it. It's different. I like it a lot. Let's see what the other guy was doing. So Taylor with second place. Quill's in there. So we do see Quill. It's not not a huge trend going on. Just one player getting spicy. And hey, sometimes that's what it takes. We saw it at the DLC Atlanta, right? Like Joshua's list. That was insane. It was spicy. I don't think it'll repeat or do it. I mean, especially because that was a different format. But sometimes that's what you need. You don't need the best deck of the format. Sometimes you just need the best deck in the room on that day. And that's... That's just how it goes. Uh, so we see we are playing the Frenemy package in here, which, again, it makes sense. You're playing Ruby. You're playing high uh, high attack characters. You're playing Sisu. You're playing Maui. you got Medusa. You're Tamatoa. You're Sisu. Um, I know I said Sisu twice. There's two of them. Uh, but Frenemy makes sense. I test it in this deck, too. Um, absolutely. I, I don't disagree. I don't have any issues seeing Frenemy being in here whatsoever. 
um, three sea suits to go with it, your Tala, your Hiram, your Maui, your Medusas. Again, all just pretty straightforward and standard. Like I mentioned, Sisu being usually a three of, we see three here, Tamatoa, Maleficence, um, Brawl. So here we're, how far I'll go is a two of. This is a weird card because like looking at topping lists, it's usually two or four. Like hardly anyone plays it at three. It's either two of or four of. It's just kind of neat to see it that way. Uh, three B prepared as opposed to the two, uh, which I mean between Sisu and B prepared, both lists did play six total. So maybe that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, two Vitalisphere, so being able to pop it and or banish it, you know, you pay the one and you give rush and plus two to a character. That's pretty good. It helps you deal with threats right away. Like I said, rush is, rush is really, really good in every format ever. That's why a lot of rush characters are either broken or uninkable. Maui, broken. Fox, broken. Beast, pan. Uh, Rafiki, uninkable. So you see the kind of pattern there. Uh, four Popsicle, four Quill, and two Lucky Dime. Um, so looking at this list, not too, too spicy again. Vitalisphere and Frenemy are the cards he's playing to be different. Um, you know, like I said, Frenemy, I get it. I like the card a lot. Vitalisphere, I wouldn't expect it. Um, it's in there. What other ones are there? We put... Do we put Vitalisphere or do we go Shield of Virtue in our budget little build when I was looking for items to just get that low cost? And we ended up going like Maui's Fish Hook too. Um, but Vitalisphere is a card that I also considered. Um, we had that budget video where we did all four of these decks in budget form. If you want to go check our channel out for that, you absolutely can. So that gets us to the number one deck in Swiss of day one. Luca right? Luca, Laka, Luca. Yeah, it's not Laka Saka. It's Luca. Sorry. Um, Team Ohana. Again, I'll have his link to that video down below. So shout out to them. Congratulations to him. Um, for Chernabog, just the one, one drop. He said we're in a very slow format. He's in a format where one drops are not good. hundred percent agree. I still like seven or eight personally, cause I don't want to miss it. But at the same time, I do agree. I tried to cut my ones and twos way down. So that way, when you're getting into that top deck, when you're getting into that late game, the high guard, you don't want to draw one drop on turn seven. You don't want to draw a bad two drop on turn seven. You want to draw into your heavy hitters as much as possible after turn four. After turn four, you want every single card off the top of your deck to be a strong card. That is what he went for here. Either every card he pulls is a good card or it's a card that draws a card. So like if we look at after turn four, again, Frenemy, you're gonna see it in all of these lists because it's one of the win conditions. So after turn four, what do you have? Or even let's look at the threes. Fox isn't gonna be a good top deck if you have nothing on board, but you have Sorceress, that's draw a card. Sisu, I mean, if you're top decking your opponent, if they're top decking too, her attack isn't there, but she quests for two. Top decking Goat, really good card. Top decking Rabbit, really good top card. Top deck Maui, really good card. Medusa, Lady Tremaine, Brawl. Brawl can be a little iffy, but it also slows your opponent down. So friends, you draw two cards. Be King, you get rid of a card. Be prepared, you board wipe them. Castle, really good card. So again, like I said, his, his strategy is something that I 100% agree with totally. Early game is, I mean, kind of like the, the format's really slow. Like you can afford to to miss in that early turns, but on the chance that he hits one, two, three, he's golden because look at the like just look at the deck. He's playing the back end. He's playing turn four through eight. He's playing that game where every single card he's pulling off the deck. He's like, I'm gonna pull a card I need every single time. Are you? Because if you don't, and you pull that one drop on one of these turns, I am going to punish you for it. That's the strategy here, and it has been working. He has six wins and two ties um, in the eight rounds, and he ended up in first. So I really, really like the deck. I like where it went. I like what he's doing with it. Um, yeah, I can't really say anything about it. It's a strategy that I 100% wholeheartedly agree with and have been telling other people to um, that that's how I feel. So 
these are the top eights. If you liked this video, let me know down below. I haven't done like these quick on the spot um, type videos uh, before. So I apologize if there's a little hiccups. Usually I'll try to like kind of look them over, think about it, plan it out a bit more. But again, it kind of just popped up as I'm going through and working on video stuff. I'm like, yeah, let's grab these and go with it right away. One take off the top. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching guys. Let me know down below how can we improve this? How can we make it more friendly for you? But thanks for watching. Take care. Until next time, like, share, subscribe, comment down below.